An armed man was arrested early on Wednesday near the home of Justice Brett Kavanaugh. So uh, apparently uh, this man had also been making threats against the Supreme Court justice, according to the New York Times. So now um, it's the New York Times, Washington Post, uh, and according to a spokeswoman for the court, the man who was arrested around 1.50 in the morning was armed with a weapon. Uh, so far, don't know what that weapon was. Uh, if it was a handgun, if it was uh, a long gun or, or, or an assault rifle, we don't know. Um, they did not specify. Uh, I, look, I'm kind of curious to know, but it also it doesn't really matter. Now, the man who is from California was arrested without incident near his home in Maryland, uh, which is outside of Washington, according to Shira Goff, a spokeswoman for the Montgomery County Police Department. That man did not even make it onto Kavanaugh's property. My understanding, she said, is that he was just in the area. Right. With a gun. Now, according to the Washington Post, two people familiar with the investigation said the initial evidence indicates that man was angry about the leaked draft of an opinion by the Supreme Court, signaling that the court is prepared to overturn Roe v. Wade. So, again, here we have a situation where you have somebody who's understandably upset about uh, reproductive rights in this country and how the Supreme Court is getting ready to strip millions of people of those rights but then goes down the path of, I'm going to get a gun. Now, I think that's the wrong path to go down. Uh, I don't think violence is the answer. Now, police were uh, apparently notified that the person might pose a threat to the justice, but not immediately clear who provided that initial tip. Uh, Goff also told the Post to believe this person came in from out of state with the intent to kill Kavanaugh. Now, look, uh, uh, I'm going to say it even though I don't have to, but yeah, good job by the cops, right? Sure. Uh, as much as I despise Brett Kavanaugh, I don't wish him bodily harm. Obviously not. Uh, and, and again, his intentions to strip reproductive rights from millions of people, not in favor of. But I also am not, uh, you know, a, a, at all an advocate for violence. I think, yes, physical violence, Killing people, that's bad. That's a terrible thing. And by the way, this, this man was in his 20s, saw a recent poll indicating that Demo young Democratic men, as well as young Republican men, are more likely to support assassinating members of the other side. So, so this is very, very dangerous. You have a situation where young men and by the way, older Republican men and older Democratic men, as well as older Republican women uh, and older Democratic women, are not at all in this. It's just young men from both sides that are, and, I, and again, I hate doing the both sides thing, but again, you look at the polls, 47% of uh, uh, Democratic young men say, oh yeah, violence, totally fine uh, against our political opponents, and 47% of Republican, young Republican men saying the same thing. We got a real problem here. We got a real problem with potential political violence. This is not good. Not good at all. So now that said, I will note, I will note that as soon as police got a tip that the gunman was going to go after someone powerful, Supreme Court justice, immediately they rush in to protect him. Immediately, immediately. When it comes to mass shooters in schools, for example, not always so quick, as we saw in Uvalde. Wouldn't it be nice if the police actually were supposed to protect everyone except for, you know, it, 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 it like, it would be nice if they protect everyone instead of what they already do, which is property and, of course, powerful people. Okay? Or would it even be better if people like that wouldn't be able to as easily get a gun. Oh, I know, perish the thought, right? Perish the thought. Now, again, there are gun laws in California, but again, all you have to do is do what this guy did. Travel to another state, get your hands on a gun that you intend to use against whoever, a Supreme Court justice, or a politician that you might not agree with, or whatever, or an abortion doctor even, 
or somebody uh for example the tulsa shooting a doctor who you feel wronged by and go and shoot them and that's what happens when you have easy access to weaponry and again the, the police if you're a regular person are not going to protect you they have no uh you know no responsibility no duty to protect average people but you see this they rush to protect the powerful over the powerless. And again, oftentimes we've also seen the police be used as a weapon against the powerless. And it's people like Brett Kavanaugh, ironically, who allowed this to happen. Not ironically, no. All, all these conservative justices, the Heritage Foundation, these think tanks, they're all about that. Yes, using the police as a tool to crack down on powerless people while protecting the powerful. So... That said, I'm glad he wasn't murdered, but this will undoubtedly lead to some negative consequences. For example, a more of a fortifying of certain members of the court by law enforcement, the conservative members of the court, of course. And I could see this definitely shutting down or being used as a pretext to shut down legitimately peaceful protests, like the ones that were happening in front of these justices' house. Remember, this did not happen during one of these protests, this was at almost two in the morning where this guy comes up and, and, and tries to enter his property. Now, that said, Republicans, uh, for example, Governor Larry Hogan uh, said in a statement on Wednesday that he had asked Attorney General Merrick Garland to increase security outside the justices' homes, which, by the way, immediately sailed right through the Senate, hasn't gone past the House yet. He said, I call on uh, leaders in both parties in Washington to strongly condemn these actions in no uncertain terms. It is vital to our constitutional system that the justices be able to carry out their duties without fear of violence against them and their families. In a bulletin released on Tuesday, the Department of Homeland Security said that after the publication of the leaked draft, advocates for and against abortion rights have, quote unquote, encouraged violence on public forums, including against government religious and reproductive healthcare personnel and facilities, as well as those with opposing ideologies. And yet here we are, right? So I understand in this country, we are incredibly polarized. And yet at the same time, you have a Congress that will not pass common sense gun regulation or actually do anything, by the way, help the American people to reduce that polarization. So this is what I fear happening. The right will claim, will use this situation to claim that all pro-choice people are violent psychopaths like this guy. And then Fox News, of course, they'll talk about it endlessly. Mainstream media will back the idea that, oh no, the, the, the court needs to be protected from these the from the fringe far left and we'll call on every single democrat by the way to apologize profusely to the right wing and they will do so they will do it they will do it they'll even also probably take up a vote very very soon for more security for the justices and the court and then we'll likely of course uh the spillover for that will end up targeting legitimate peaceful protests using overwhelming force. In fact, look, they've already started. The right wing has. Ben Sass, Republican from Nebraska, said in a statement that President Biden, quote, needs to personally and forcefully condemn violence and threats against Supreme Court justices. It's Ben Sass. Then you have the Daily Wire, uh, his... Uh, uh, one host, Michael Knowles, tweeted in this, quote, it should go without saying, but the gun-toting leftist showing up at Brett Kavanaugh's house in the middle of the night to kill him and possibly his entire family is much, much worse than January 6th. What? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. Oh, hold on. What? This was an attempted overthrow of our country. These are both bad situations, pretty sure, threatening to, you know, try to murder the vice president at the time. 
and going into Congress to, to chase after and, and even attempt to um, capture and even execute. So we've seen plans. If they had gotten their hands on AOC or, or Nancy Pelosi, it would have been over. It would have been over for them. Ridiculous. And then you have Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell is now calling on Democrats to pass the Supreme Court security bill. Saying, House Democrats must pass this bill. And they need to do it today. No more fiddling around with this. They need to pass it today before the sun sets. And you know what? They probably will. They probably will. Because, again, these uh, they will immediately browbeat the Democrats into saying, oh, you don't care about our, the people in power. And, of course, the Democrats always care about the people in power. In fact, they prioritize people in power. So, and yet, Again, the same people saying we need uh, immediate security for Supreme Court justices who refuse to do anything, anything about children that are being gunned down in this country by mass shooters. To prevent people like the Uvalde mass shooter, the, the Buffalo mass shooter, the Tulsa mass shooter, and, and now this attempted shooter from getting their hands on a weapon. And look, we've had over 20 mass shootings since then, since Uvalde. But no, we're not going to move on that at all. But when it comes to protecting the powerful, when it comes to protecting our own, well, that's when we act, and we act super fast. Not surprising at all. 